make your day as well. I'm trying to force myself to be more energetic, or else my mental state won't be able to keep up. Ugh, my heart's thumping like crazy. I might as well have a laid-back, so what, attitude and go ahead with high energy. Yeehaw! Ah, but be careful that your batteries don't run out for various reasons. And just like I say each time, don't forget to save frequently! I... I never... expected the funhouse itself to be the ultimate weapon. Oh well, let's just press on ahead. I, is it really alright to accept a situation so easily? I mean, that's not what's important. The thing that's really important is the killer who used the building structure. Like, who's Mekumaru's murderer? But is it really okay to believe the building is the weapon? Nagito said it, you know. There's no way I'd lie at such an important moment. I don't want to die either. What happened to the bastard who kept saying how much they didn't mind dying? He's right. There was a time when I thought I could become a stepping stone for your hopes, but I would sincerely retract that remark. Retract? I'm disappointed too, you know? If this was a murder for the sake of hope, I'd happily sacrifice myself. <laughs> you say such falsehoods per usual. There is no such thing as murder for the sake of hope. Murder is simply murder. Forcibly sacrificing others for one's own desires. Even one as diabolical as I would avoid such actions. I see. It's fine. Let's just leave him alone and find out who killed Coach Nekomaru as fast as we can. Just so you know, it's not like I'm getting hungry or anything, you know. Uh, Akane! You are drooling waterfalls? Anyway, if the killer used the building structure, why don't we think about how they used it? How they killed Nekomaru? It might be better if we clarify the cause of death first, don't you think? I see! That's it. I think he might have died from falling. Died from falling? If the Funhouse's secret is that it's a structure where both towers and houses are vertically connected, then the killer made use of its height and caused Nekomaru to die from falling. Are you saying they pushed him off? Where'd they push him off from? That, I don't know yet. <laughs> don't just make things up when you don't know the method. Where in that building would you even be able to push someone off in the first place? It might be possible in the tower. You could push him off the fourth floor when the elevator is on the first floor. Did you forget how the elevator functions? When it's on the first floor, the door on the fourth floor won't open. <laughs> Saying he died from falling is truly incorrect. You should burn in the flames of hell. Hmm. But my gut is going crazy right now. When the elevator is on the first floor, you can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Hmm. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from up there. Then, how about this? After locking Mekamaru inside the elevator, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor and made use of the drop. Hold on! Did you forget the elevator has a sensor? As long as there's a moving object inside. No, that's wrong! That sensor should only work if something is moving. If Nekomaru wasn't moving inside, the elevator sensor wouldn't have detected anything. Could it be his sleep mode? When Nekomaru's goodnight button is pressed, all of his functions shut down and he enters sleep. 
If he's in sleep mode, the elevator sensor wouldn't have noticed him, right? I see. So that's how... However, even if they moved the elevator in that manner, Nekomaru would have just moved along with it. There would have been no drop for him to fall and die from, yes? That's what I was about to explain before Kazuichi interrupted me. Silence, pest! Now you're calling me a pest? If you arrange it a certain way, you can cause the drop within the elevator. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is suspicious. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? What about the oil on the floor? The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. I agree with that. Didn't the doorknob have scrape marks on it? That might have been where it got scraped by the wire. Is that the same wire that was tied around Nekomaru? The tip of that wire was tied into a loop. If the elevator moved while that loop part hung from the doorknob... If they did something like that, he would have been suspended in midair! That's right. He was suspended in midair. Huh? The killer tied up Nekomaru with the wire while he was in sleep mode. Tied the tip of the wire into a knot and hung it on the doorknob to the fourth floor. With that, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor of Great Tower. And suspended Nekomaru in midair. That's right! He was so well hung! <laughs> kind of like... You better not finish that sentence! The killer took advantage of the elevator's unique feature. Only the floor moves. By doing that, they created a drop so Nekomaru could fall to his death. Too easy! So what if they created a drop? There's no way you can make him fall and die with just that. Why? If Nekomaru is suspended in midair like that, then how do you get him to fall? Because if he's suspended in midair, he won't die if he doesn't actually fall. Even if they suspended Nekomaru from a wire, how would they make him fall? There's no one in the tower to push him off. There's no way they could do that. Even if they suspended Nekomaru from a wire, how would they make him fall? There's no one in the tower to push him off. There's no way they could do that. It doesn't mean someone had to push him off. It's possible that he fell on his own. What? Nekomaru? Nekomaru should have still been in sleep mode, right? Allow me to cut through those words! What do you think would happen if Nekomaru woke up while he was suspended upside down in midair? What are you saying? Like, how would he even wake up? He has an alarm inside his body. As long as it was armed, it would have deactivated his sleep mode. Which means the killer set the alarm before they suspended Nekomaru. If you woke up from an alarm and realized you were hanging upside down and had no clue why... If something like that happened to you, you would start panicking a lot, right? Instinctively, your body would start moving. Nekomaru probably did exactly that. And then, in order to make it fall from the force he was generating, the wire was hung on the tip of the doorknob so it would easily slip off. In actuality, the scrape marks caused by the wire were near the tip of the doorknob, right? But Nekomaru didn't fall because the wire came off, right? He fell because the entire doorknob came off. When Nekomaru awoke, he must have struggled much more than expected. 
which caused the doorknob to break off. Was that unexpected for the killer, too? Well, that's probably it. If they knew it'd leave behind evidence like that, they would have at least tried to do something to cover it up. Nekomaru fell to his death. Do you finally understand now? Yeah. It appears it's just as Miss Sonia said. I'm just a pest. No, I'm not just a pest. I'm a total fucking pig. Isn't that right, Miss Sonia? If I'm a fucking pig, you can say so. No, I believe you gave your all. Hey, why aren't you teasing me anymore? This guy, he gets off on this. So thanks to that alarm, Nekomaru ended up falling while he was still hanging upside down. That doesn't mean he just crashed straight into the floor. Of course, you know that too, right? I see! When Nekomaru fell to the floor, he ended up colliding with the pillar. Isn't that it? Finally, the pillar! So that's how the pillar shattered, and why oil was spilled all over the place. See? I told you the pillar was the weapon. My gut was totally right! Well, the pillar was a bonus. It's not even clear if the killer intended that, or if it was just a coincidence. At this point, it is quite difficult to find a clue that will lead to the killer. Then what about the alarm? I'm positive the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m., and if we map it out from there, Hold on, baby gangsta. S stop calling me baby gangsta. What'd you just say? Did you say the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m.? You didn't check it yourself. Nekomaru's alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. Nah, that's impossible. Because even though I slept in a little, I still got to the tower at 7 in the morning. N now that you mention it, so did I. There was no way I could be late for Monokuma Tai Chi, so I left for Grape Tower before 7 a.m. And if we found Nekomaru's body there, it would have been before the 7.30 a.m. alarm went off. It appears yet another contradiction has been birthed. How were you able to discover Nekomaru died at 7.30 a.m. when you went to the tower at 7? Tower. Before 7 a.m., I am certain. But the alarm inside Nekomaru's chest was set for 7.30 a.m. Nekomaru died because of that alarm, right? His time of death from the time the body was discovered. One of those must be an illusion. The killer probably did some tampering. They probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. No, that's wrong! No, the clock inside his chest was a radio clock, so it would have been impossible to mess with. So you're saying there's no way the killer could have tampered with the clock? Maybe the clock Miss Sonia saw was the one that got tampered with. The clock inside Grape House? No. I checked all the clocks inside the fun house. Oh, that's what I asked you to do. So you really listened to me and checked all the clocks. 
And because of that, I can confidently declare that all the clocks had the same time displayed. If there's no possibility that the time was tampered with, then we must doubt that human's testimony. Please believe me, we are not lying. Then maybe it's a misunderstanding? I never misunderstand. I'll crush you into dog food. It's all coming together! You said you checked all the clocks inside the building. Isn't that right, Fuyuhiko? Yeah, none of the clocks had the wrong time. But what if all those clocks had been messed with? What? All the clocks? So even if you checked all the clocks inside the building, there's no way you'd have noticed it. I see. So the killer messed with the time inside the whole building by changing all the clocks. So that's what it was. There's no way I would have noticed that. This is truly fantastic! Now's not the time to be pleased. More importantly, how much was the time off? If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on Nekomaru's radio clock. The time of death. It's clearly 7.30 a.m. 
problem is, what time would 7.30 be? In our time. Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? If only I heard the sound when he fell. I agree with that. That's right. We should have heard the sound he made when he fell. Wasn't it that rumbling noise? Rumbling? I thought it was just an earthquake, so I went back to sleep. Was that the sound from when Nekomaru fell? Well, a huge body fell from the fourth floor to the first, and the pillar fell with it. It's obvious we'd hear the impact sound. We heard that noise, too. It was when we were gathered at the Strawberry House Lounge. What is it, Sonia? Oh, well, that sound everyone heard? I did not hear it at all. Huh? You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping. I could not sleep at all. I was awake the whole night with hunger pings. There's nothing to worry about. What's important is that rumbling noise, anyway. If we use that rumbling sound as a reference, we might be able to figure out how much our time was off. I heard that sound probably around 5.30 in the morning. Huh? You can tell? I instantly woke up and left my room. And that's when I saw the clock in the lounge. Excellent work, Akane! I see! Nekomaru's alarm went off at 7.30. And if we heard the sound of his impact at 5.30, that means our time was off by two hours. Two hours? That much? We were starving pretty badly. There's no way we would have noticed. Plus, the funhouse has no windows. And there weren't any Monokuma announcements either. However, for what reason did the killer alter our perception of time? The reason is obvious. So they could lure out just Nekomaru. If you messed with the clocks and used a specific thing, you definitely get Nekomaru to the tower alone, right? From there, the killer's plan was a splendid success. That's all it means. I see! That's it. The killer made use of the Monokuma Tai Chi activity in the morning. How did they use it? We were required to go to Great Tower every morning at 7 a.m. for that activity, right? But if they mess with all the clocks inside the building, what would that do to us? We wouldn't be able to attend on time. That wouldn't affect Nekomaru. His radio clock had the exact time. That's right. In doing so, the killer was able to lure him to the tower by himself at the precise time. Then, when I witnessed Nekomaru early in the morning, If I recall, you witnessed Nekomaru around 5 a.m. And if that time was also two hours off, it should have been 7 a.m. Yeah, that's pretty much it. At that time, he was heading over to Monokuma Tai Chi, right on schedule. I see. Now that I think about it, I realize what Monokuma meant when he said those words. Ah! Too early! He didn't even ask you yet! You said everyone. You were including us, right? We thought we came to the tower on time, but in truth, it was way past the meeting time. Ah, jeez! That's, well, how should I put it? Um, what was it? You know, tripping over a foot or something like that. Are you talking about tripping over someone else's fault? Wrong! Too bad! Liar! I'm right! That's not it! It's incorrect! Th that's definitely the correct answer. You won't... Let's just ignore the peanut gallery. Now that we've found out how the killer lured Nekomaru, the number of suspects has drastically decreased. Hey, why would that decrease the number of suspects? Don't be a friggin' liar! You'll know I'm not lying when you listen to what Uyuhiko's going to say next. Huh? What the hell do you mean? You witnessed Nekomaru going toward the tower. It 
something else happen after that? Are you talking about that alarm? Hmm. Alarm? A little while after I witnessed Nekomaru, the clock in the Strawberry House lounge started going off. Plus, it was just before that rumbling sound occurred. That's it. So that's what it is. If Nekomaru died when the rumble happened, then whoever doesn't have an alibi at the time is the prime suspect. Really? Was there anyone who didn't have an alibi at that time? I remember now. The sound was so loud I couldn't help bolting from my room. But there was one guy who never left the lounge. We were both on the same floor. It's pretty weird that bastard never came out of his guest room. Which means that person does not have an alibi for when Nekomaru fell? Who is it? Who's the bastard? You're the only one! The one who wasn't there. It's you, right, Nagito? That's right! Nagito wasn't there! It was just me, Gundam, and Fuyuhiko. You didn't come out, even though the alarm was going off like crazy. You weren't in your room, were you? If that's the case, where were you? Please, say something! If you don't hurry up and answer, I'm gonna suicide dive you! If I may be frank, even if I wanted to go to the lounge, I couldn't. You couldn't? What do you mean? <laughs> it's merely the foolish talk of the week. Not only did I not hear the alarm, I never even heard that rumbling sound. You, you're definitely fucking lying. Uh, however, that is also true for me. It is obvious that I did not hear the alarm in Strawberry House. But I did not hear the rumbling sound either. Is that not strange? I mean, everyone else heard it. To be honest, it's not just them. The same goes for me too. I was in a pretty deep sleep, so I thought that's why I couldn't hear it. But it wasn't that. I probably couldn't hear it at all. Couldn't hear it? What does that mean? You still don't know. Think about what the three of us who didn't hear a sound have in common. And I'm sure you'll figure it out. Nagito, Sony, and Chiaki, the three of you were staying in deluxe rooms, right? If I recall, the deluxe rooms are... The 
reason we could not hear the rumbling noise. That's right. It was because the deluxe rooms have superior sound insulation. I actually noticed that. Nice catch, Hajime. Are you using your ultimate reserve course student talent? Now then, you guys must understand by now, right? The true identity of Nekomaru's killer. Oh, hold on a sec. Why does that lead to who the killer is? Why? Well, that fact just now is a very important clue and a decisive factor in identifying the killer. Decisive factor? There's something I want to ask you. When the alarm rang at the Strawberry House Lounge, you rushed over there too, right? What's wrong with that? If the bell of catastrophe rings throughout the night, it is the universe's providence to stop it. Why were you able to hear it? Hear what? I mean, you were also staying in a deluxe room, right? Nagito was staying in a deluxe room in the same house, on the same floor, and he couldn't even hear it. So why were you able to hear that alarm? Now that you mention it... Gundam? There was only one possibility. You weren't in your room at the time. That's why, even though you were staying in a deluxe room, you still went to the lounge. Am I right? Gundam... Um... You have some sort of explanation. Right? Gundam probably couldn't return to his room because of Fuyuhiko. Me? After you saw Nekomaru heading to the tower, you stayed at the lounge for a while. Am I correct? Until the moment that alarm started ringing, right? If you were in the lounge for that long, the killer who had left earlier obviously wouldn't be able to go back. Even though Mekamaru's murder was a death trap that utilized the alarm in his chest, the killer still needed to prepare the murder in advance. Like putting Nekamaru in sleep mode and tying him up with the wire. In order to do that, the killer needed to be waiting for Nekamaru at the tower. Which means when Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekamaru, the killer was already at the tower. And once they tried to go back, they couldn't because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. In their original plan, the killer should have returned to their room before the alarm in the lounge went off. And they were supposed to stay in their room. They weren't planning to come out and go to the lounge. Which means they wouldn't have heard the alarm or the rumbling sound. Thus proving they were in the room, just like us. The best case scenario would have been if those two in the lounge had gone to check the deluxe rooms. After all, if they personally saw the killer sleeping in their room, it gives the killer a stronger alibi. Unfortunately, they failed to secure that alibi. I was in the lounge. So the killer couldn't go back to their room and ended up hearing the lounge's alarm. But why'd you come out? You should have hid till the excitement died down. If Gundam tried to hide, and if those two went to his room to check on him, he would have been found out. That would have been the worst possible outcome. That's why he couldn't just stay hidden. If those two had just checked the deluxe rooms as planned, that would have been ideal, but how ironic. The moment Fuyuhiko set foot in the lounge, your plan was doomed. G Gundam? Please, can you at least say something? Answer me this. Including myself in my four dark devas of destruction, how many ears do you possess? The answer is 10. 
That's right, I possess ten ears. That means I have five times the hearing of a normal human. The soundproof system here may as well not exist. Is that your argument? You bastard. Do you understand the situation you're in right now? D do not panic. The truth shall now commence. At the time, I left my room to go to the bathroom. By coincidence, I heard the alarm. That's right. That's all it was. The world is always so simple. Are you saying it was just a coincidence? Isn't that timing a little too perfect? And yet, I'm being suspected by all of you. It seems it was actually horrible timing on my part. I see. You're still holding out. Well, you don't have to admit it. We're going to decide who the killer is with the majority vote anyway. So, why don't we just go ahead and start voting? It's obvious that Gundam is the killer. Uh, hold on a sec. You know, Hajime, this class trial, this killing, it's merely the opening act, you know. Hey! What do you mean the class trial is just the opening act? Perhaps I should say it's just a farce. Just a boring farce. So boring, so stressful. I'm so painfully bored that I might develop stomach ulcers. Seriously. Let's just hurry up and finish this before I collapse from poor health. Nagito, something definitely happened to you, didn't it? Mm -hmm. At some point during the investigation, your behavior became even weirder. What? What actually happened? Did you discover something? <laughs> well, let's just leave that fun for later. And finish this opening act already. Ah! You said opening act again! Uh, please hold on! We have yet to hear Gunnar's rebuttal! But he's completely shut up. Perhaps he can't argue anymore. Gundam! <laughs> I was simply at a loss for words after being dumbfounded by your pathetic assumption. In fact, I shall deny the very basis. Your assumption has been wrong since the beginning. Since the beginning? Based on your assumption, I hung Nekomaru from the fourth floor of the tower and made the floor descend to the first floor. From there, after returning to Strawberry House, I was present when the alarm at the lounge went off, correct? Although going to and fro is busy enough as it is, how would I be able to travel between both houses anyway? Let's see. The contact elevator was broken. As I recall, the killer tampered with the Great House control panel, which shut down the elevator. Plus, the stop elevator should have been facing the Great House side. If so, the human who used the elevator would have left it at Great House. For these reasons, it's an indisputable fact that the killer destroyed the elevator at Great House. And what's wrong with that? If the elevator was broken at Great House, he wouldn't be able to return to Strawberry House. However, I was already at Strawberry House. I was present when the alarm in the lounge started ringing. Which means your assumption is clearly wrong. Are you serious? And here I thought it's already been decided. <laughs> Have you learned your lesson, pitiful humans? You cannot overcome this contradiction. elevator was the only means of travel between the two houses as long as that elevator was broken your assumption collapses plus the elevator was broken at grape house if the killer cannot return to strawberry house since i was at strawberry house at that time there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we stop this already?
that elevator was. The only means of travel between the... No, that's wrong! No, there should have been another way to move between the two houses without the elevator. Such a method does not exist! Then why don't we ask the person who actually used that method? You're the only one! Nagito, you should know. Uh, what are you talking about? Don't play dumb. You appeared so suddenly that one time because you used that method, right? There's a secret passage connecting the first floor of Strawberry House to the third floor of Grape House. Isn't that right? Jeez, once again, I let the reserve course show up. But you're right. There's a door on the floor of the Octagon, which is on the first floor of Strawberry House. After I opened the door and went down... Surprise, surprise! I ended up in the Monokuma Archive, which is on the third floor of Grape House. Meaning, the third floor and the fourth floor are actually connected. Plus, once you've cleared the final dead room once, you can pass through it as many times as you want. If they use that secret passage, they could have gone between the two houses as much as they want. Infinity Unlimited Flame! However, what if the killer was unaware of the existence of the final dead room? There's no way they didn't know. That is merely an illusion you have fabricated from your own suspicion. <laughs> if you value your life, you should stop with your scrutiny. There's no way I can stop. Did you say? Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes, provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? I can't back down! I already proved the secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the Octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to drown in the maelstrom of blood... Allow me to cut through those words! The wire used to string up Nekomaru's body, the hammer that looked like the weapon, and the chain on the door in the tower. Those are all the items that weren't in Funhouse. Where did the killer obtain them? The only place I can think of is the Octagon. There were various weapons and tools there. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff like wires, hammers, and chains, too. Since those items were used in the crime, there's no doubt that the killer went to the Octagon. If that's the case, they obviously know about the secret passage, too, right? <laughs> Seems... This is the end. Normally, we'd end up listening to Hajime lecture us with a very long summary of the case. But there's no reason to waste any more time on this opening act. Hey, what are you... First of all, by messing with all the clocks in the building, Gundam tried to lure only Nekomaru. The elevator was probably broken by that point. Thanks to that, Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower which was supposed to be the meetup point. 
so he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, just like we did when we found out the elevator was broken. Well, it's obvious he did. Also, the button in Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, so he was easily able to enter Strawberry Tower. But surprise! Gundam was waiting for Nekomaru's arrival. Well, hold on. If Nekomaru didn't go to Strawberry Tower, what would the killer have done then? Their plan was a balancing act of uncertainties. But even if they failed, they probably wouldn't have minded. They can just greet everyone the next morning as if nothing happened, and come up with a different plan. And, without such a risky plan, they wouldn't have been able to lure him at all. I'm going to continue summarizing the case, okay? Through this, Gundam successfully lured Nekomaru to Strawberry Tower. There's no way he could fight head-on with the robotic Nekomaru. So by pressing the good night button, he rendered Nekomaru powerless without fighting him. Hold on! You... what did you just say? That... I didn't battle? Hmm? What's wrong with that? Don't... mess with me! Don't mess with me! I cannot ignore those words! Why are you angry all of a sudden? You fools! Do not understand! You don't understand at all! Ha! You make me laugh! After all this time, you still don't understand anything at all! I don't understand anything. What does that mean? It appears I cannot finish just yet. Maybe I'm just a human destined for hell. However, I cannot finish just yet. I cannot finish! What do you intend to do? It's obvious! I'm going to destroy your illusory assumption! Are you saying you still have more? You still have room to argue? Your words. You said I press Nekomaru's goodnight button. However, that button was on the back of Nekomaru's neck. To press it, I'd have to get behind him. It's not easy to get the drop on Coach Nekomaru. It's even more difficult if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just as I thought, truly frail, succumbing so easily to this simple argument, it was just a mere illusion. <laughs> if you want to set me up as the killer, at least surpass your own human limitations. That's wrong, Gundam. You're the one who's wrong. <laughs> Such a wonderful line. However, I cannot say that I'm satisfied. Listen well. I shall teach you two tips for making someone admit their defeat. First, you must crush them with your own overwhelming power. And as for the other, you must provide a reason that will persuade that human. You have not fulfilled either of those yet. I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! With her! Crushed as David prophesized! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! With her! Crushed as David prophesized! Show me the cadaver! I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! With her! Crushed as David prophesized! I won't let you! With her! Crushed as David prophesized! For the Tanaka Empire! It's Nekoboru's back! Do you really think I can get behind him so easily? This is the end! Even if you didn't get behind Nekomaru, you should have been able to press the button on the back of his neck. As long as you have the power of the hamsters you keep with you! Oh? Are you seriously saying he used his hamsters to press the button on the back of Nekomaru's neck? Of course that'd be impossible for a normal hamster, but it would've been possible for Gunny. In fact, we saw that with our very own eyes, right? No, 
able to mention it. After Ibuki was killed in the music venue, one of Gundam's hamsters retrieved the piece of wallpaper from the baton lighting, right? Hey, with your friends and their exceptionally smart brains, it must have been possible to secretly get one of them behind Mechamaru and press the button on the back of his neck. How about it, Gundam? <laughs> <laughs> Not just myself, but you actually brought up how splendid my subordinates are. <sighs> I have no recourse but to admit it. Admit it? Did you say you would... It appears I've obtained a one-way ticket to hell. Fine! Then you must trample me underfoot and in back. Victory can only be built upon a foundation of corpses. You cannot find peace without sacrifice anywhere. Now, trample this life. Trample it as though it were mere trash on the side of the road. Pull the curtain strings of this worthless performance with your own two hands. everything that happened in this case. Let's first go over the many tricks the killer prepared before they committed the crime. First, they destroyed the contact elevator. This separated Nagito and the others in Strawberry House from our group in Grape House. Next, they lured Nekomaru out by himself by turning back all the clocks in the Fun House by two hours. Additionally, in order to secure an alibi, the killer went to the Strawberry House Lounge and set the wall clock's alarm to 5.30 a.m. After finishing their preparations, the killer went to Strawberry Tower with the necessary tools in hand. They obtained these tools from the Octagon, which you can enter once you clear the final dead room. This means the killer discovered the secret of the Funhouse faster than anybody else. 
That secret being, Strawberry House and Grape House are actually the same building. On the morning of the incident, Nekomaru woke up and headed over to Grape Tower for a specific reason. There, Fuyuhiko, who was at the lounge by coincidence, witnessed Nekomaru. According to Fuyuhiko's testimony, that was around 5 a.m., but by that point, the killer had already messed with our perception of time. In actuality, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 7 a.m. That's also the same time Monokuma Tai Chi begins. Nekomaru went to Grape Tower to participate in that. However, because the contact elevator was broken, Nekomaru was unable to go to Grape Tower. So he decided to try going to Strawberry Tower. But the killer was waiting for him there. With the power of hamsters, they were able to press the good night button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. This forced him to enter sleep mode, rendering him immobile. From there, the killer began preparing to use the ultimate weapon. First, they set the alarm in Nekomaru's chest to 7.30 a.m. so he'd wake up. Then they tied him up with a metal wire, tied the tip of the wire into a loop, and hung it on the doorknob. After leaving Strawberry Tower, the killer then destroyed the door button to Strawberry Hall. They did this to keep us from entering Strawberry Tower and to keep us from discovering the secret of the building structure that they used to kill Nekomaru. Then, they used the secret octagon passageway to travel to Grape House. After arriving at Grape Hall, they pressed the button to open the door to the tower. When that happened, the elevator-like floor of the tower began descending and Nekomaru's body was still inside, dangling upside down in mid-air from the wire. The killer entered Grape Tower to see if their setup was successful. And placed a hammer on the floor to look like the weapon, then wrapped a chain around the back door. This was done to make us falsely believe we couldn't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. With this, the killer finished their setup and tried to go back to their room using the secret passage so they could craft their alibi when Nekomaru died from the fall. But something unexpected happened. Fuyuhiko, who saw Nekomaru earlier, was still at the lounge. As a result, the killer couldn't return to their room and with no options available, time ran out. The lounge's wall clock alarm started ringing at 5.30 well, actually, 7th. To avoid a worst-case scenario, the killer was forced to appear in front of Fuyuhiko with the others. When the wall clock's alarm rang, that was also the same time Nekomaru was waking up. He woke up while he was still hanging upside down, so he couldn't help but sway his body powerfully. Originally, the loop of wire was only supposed to slip off the doorknob. But because there was a heavier load than expected, the doorknob ended up breaking. Nekomaru fell from the fourth floor all the way to the first floor. He crashed into the pillar, which decapitated him on impact, and died. The sound of Nekomaru's impact echoed throughout the funhouse. However, by this point, the killer's plan was about to fail, thanks to the broken doorknob and Fuyuhiko. Meaning, the killer is someone who wouldn't have heard the alarm if they were in the deluxe room. They also wouldn't have been able to return to their guest room, because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. That someone is Gundam Tanaka. I can't think of anyone else but you.
For a mere human, you did quite well. Stop. Stop it already. Stop using weird words to avoid the truth. Oh. I'll friggin' kill you myself! I cannot believe it. I just cannot believe. You. You killed. Nakumaru? I cannot believe something like that! You don't wish to forgive me? Do you feel regret? Then finish it! Cast your impure votes for Gundam Tanaka! My beloved, deadly foes, let the voting time begin! isn't all that exciting. Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Please pull the lever! Crap! I bit my tongue at the most important part! <laughs> 